Because we're getting old. That's fun. <sighs> Shut up, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Nearly Informed. What the hell is that? <laughs> Came right out of you. <laughs> you just called me Granny. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like a supervillain right there. <laughs> What's up? It's Nearly Informed. I'm Brian Mooch. Shireen Thor. The one and only. <laughs> I, said it, I said it for you that Shireen time. Shireen Thor. She is the one and only, everyone. You can find her on at Shireen Thor on all social media platforms or on Google. I dare you. Find another Shireen Try Thor. It. See how many pages you have to go to. To find another Shireen Thor, I guess 10, 10 pages in on Google. So? I and, don't think so. And who the hell even knows what ten, what is in after 10 pages on Google? I think question. if you look at the 10th page, Google's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Get a life. What? Are you seriously still? <laughs> you're wrong. Whatever you were looking for, <laughs> you are wrong. I know that today, uh, today because we tried to uh, settle the debate. Someone threw out this conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, by the way, we'll talk about Brad's out today. We'll talk about that. We got a lot of fun stuff on the show. I want to talk about... Racism. Ooh. White people being dummies. Oh, that's exciting. I know you can jump in on that one. Yeah. Um, I'm super brown, so you I can. northern African. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite thing about uh like people are like, oh Shireen's Egyptian. I'm like, yeah, African American. hundred percent African American. Yeah. And, and then you know, some people will be like, No, no you're Middle East. No, it's not. It's Af- it's Northern Africa. It's very confusing. Um I want to talk about Nipsey Hustle too, the the rapper that was just murdered, because that was a really interesting impact it had on Los Angeles in terms of like uh, a rapper and activist being murdered. Really uplifting show today. Oh, it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to talk about Shireen's upcoming five-year anniversary and uh, and Brad's birthday and how much fun birthdays are when you're old, old granny like Shireen. I am old and I don't have a problem with that. So today we were talking about, and maybe you have one of these, you know those things like t- I was this, I was today years old when I learned this. You know, like people say that because it's basically just saying like, yo, I found out something today that I thought was different. Like, for for example, on the Amp Morning Show, uh, and I guess this is like just cultural things. It's funny when people from different cultures find out something about the other culture that that you just never thought of. Not that you thought you were wrong. You just never even thought it caught your mind. Edgar was saying like his deal breaker. It's such a silly deal breaker to me. (laughs) His deal breaker was if he goes to someone's house or like back in the day when he's dating somebody and they were Latino and they had canned refried beans. That was it. Right. He was like, <laughs> and I go, and we're all like, ha, ha what? Wait, seriously? <laughs> and I go like, wait, how else do refried beans come? Like, how do you make, how do you refry? <laughs> right. Like, what the <laughs> hell is it? Like, I, in my life, I've never even thought, the, the thought has never crossed my mind <laughs> that you can make refried beans. It's actually really funny. Right? Like, have you ever this thought? This is of- the whitest moment ever for I you, know. Brian. It's very good. One, okay, I didn't know beans, like, grow on plants, like oh. uh, like the the beans that you refry, and pinto beans. I looked that up. I thought they might be, maybe came on trees. Wait, when, really? Is that what you thought? I have never thought about it. You, you've never thought it. That makes sense. Who thinks I, about these things? Right. I've never sat around and been like, man, Dad, how the hell are refried beans made? That's I just, what I want to know. Literally, I... I assumed, I assume, I'm not kidding you, that everybody from every culture just got refried beans from a can. Yeah. Like, I literally thought that. I thought I mean, that's where I get them, or at the restaurant, where I assume maybe they got them from the can. I, exactly. I'm <laughs> assuming every time I've eaten refried beans, it's been one of those big Rosarita cans. You know? Yeah. And the Rosarita is the top shelf refried beans, by the way. I'm not going like, yeah. don't You're mess around. You're keeping it sexy. You know what? She looks like she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. You know what? That's so gender biased, though. You're because ridiculous. If you had a man, if you had a man on the front of the can, we'd be if, like mm, if questionable. Was, yeah. If the name was like, uh, if it was just like Hector's, I'd be like, how the hell does Hector know about refried beans? <laughs> so he was, and I literally never thought. I didn't know how beans came. Yeah. Like uncooked. I guess they're hard. So wait, this happened on the morning show? Like, did you sound the this way happened. you sound right now oh, on the morning I, I show? I sounded very confused. That's wonderful. And I just got clowned on by by Mexicans and pe- anyone from Latino That's cultures. Wonderful. They're like, are you out of your mind? Like, you really thought? <laughs> like, I <laughs> didn't think about it. That's the thing. And, and so, But it was funny because it was like one of those things where I was like, I, yeah, I guess I never really thought about it. Yeah. Also, you know, if you asked me how hummus was made, I'd be like, wait a minute, you make hummus? It doesn't just come like that? It doesn't like, it's all mushed up. You don't just squish it out of a tree like yeah, that? It's like, uh, it's like honey. <laughs> <laughs> Comes right out of a, a hummus plant. Well, those you just are from Garbanzo beans. Mush- I'm Middle Eastern. I can educate you. So this you. is your refried beans <laughs> yes. moment. Yes. Uh, you're, you're not into the refried, the pinto beans. You're into the garbanzos? Oh, you don't even know about the garbanzos. What the, what the hell are chickpeas doing then? Do chickpeas go in hummus? Garbanzo and chickpeas are the same thing, basically. Oh, really? Yeah, they're the same kind. Is that a fact, or are you just- 100%. Or are you just throwing that I by a white- I am the authority on everything, Well, Egyptian. no, I think 
True. <laughs> True. You're the Egyptian authority here. You reign you reign supreme in this studio on the Egypt all all matters Egyptian. Yes. No, no, but I think you're doing the thing to me because I'm a super white dude. <laughs> where just, now I'm gonna walk around thinking garbanzo beans and chickpeas are the same oh, damn no, thing no, no. and I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna walk into a do buzzsaw. Want, do you want me to uh, Google it for you? No, because then that, to put that totally undermines your Egyptian um reigning supreme. Do not knowledge. undermine my Egyptian all right, supremacy. I will take your word for Thank it. Thank you. So I spent a good third of the morning show researching something that a statement that blew my mind okay. and the statement was i was today years old when i found out goofy from disneyland is actually a cow and not a dog <gasps> boom mind blown i didn't even know that was a conspiracy I feel mind blown because I thought he was a dog. <laughs> and and you're really going to feel mind blown because there is an Egyptian tie-in here. Stop. It. You're never going to believe this. Me and Goofy for life. So I start plowing through um like Google cuz I'm like, yo, you first of all you Google is Goofy a cow or a dog and there's actually articles about it. There's research. That is ridiculous. There's stuff on, on. snopes.com, Dear right? Lord. Some serious <laughs> journalism going into this thing. <laughs> And, and then most people are like, oh, it's a dog. You're stupid. Yeah. But then you got to go farther back and look at the debates of how Goofy was created. Because Goofy was created in 1930. And the initial story for Goofy was that Goofy's parents are cows. Okay. Goofy's parents are Northern Highland Scottish cows, right? This cartoon, yeah, it's wild, right? <laughs> but here's where the, they changed his character in 1932 to a dog. Okay. Goofy's backstory is one of his parents was an Egyptian cow and the other one was a northern Scottish cow. Are you kidding me? I swear this to God. Crazy. I read this on the internet and it has to be true because it was on page it seven of Google. It's no. definitely true if it was on the internet. It was on page one of okay. my Google search of is Goofy a cow wow. or a dog. But, but here's the other thing that lends itself to is Goofy a cow or a dog is that Goofy's love interest, he didn't have like a Mickey yeah, and a Minnie Mouse. she's definitely a cow. She's a cow, Which right? Which always confused me because I thought, why would they match the dog with the cow? Right. See? So you already knew about- um, Yeah. Maribel? Uh, I think it's uh, Cavell or something like that. Whatever. Whatever. The we cow. We know who we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a cow. <laughs> I forgot that he was in love with a cow. But here's the thing. Okay. They don't generally, in the in the Disney world, support interspecies. Oh, no, they're not into that. Bah, ah, ah, ah. You know what I mean? Wah, no. They're not down with that. Like, <laughs> Mickey wasn't hooking up with Daisy Duck. You know, no, I was Mickey Mouse, wasn't. Minnie Mouse. Daisy Donald Duck, Donald. Daisy Duck. That's right. And now, granted, I think we're progressive enough now to say that if, if Goofy wants to love a cow and he's a dog, that's get totally that shit, fine. Goofy, get that. Right? You know, you can, whatever <laughs> whatever your little goof troop is made of, they can be little dog, dog cows. But back in the, in the 1930s. Oh, it's, not okay. it's not okay. Nah, 1930s, mm -hmm. they were not supporting, no one was supporting Goofy the dog hitting Maribel the cow. Nope. All right? That not was not going to happen. But so somehow they kind of phased out the whole cow situation and they just kind of moved Goofy away and they partnered him up with Pluto a little more. So now you got mm. Pluto and Goofy kicking it all the Being time. dog homies. That's right. So now yeah. you just assume these two are dogs when initially I think he was a Goofy cow. was meant to be a cow. And I think that the cartoon kind of evolved for, to be, you know, for him to be away from a cow. But then I thought about it. I kind of like Goofy being a cow. You do? I think it's kind of cute. Why? He's like a silly cow. I like him as a dog. Yeah, but I didn't ever like this at, because Pluto's a dog and, and Goofy's he's like a, real a dog. dog. Yeah. yeah, and Pluto doesn't talk and Goofy does. Like, That's what a the good heck? point. Like, where's the yeah. consistency? That's a good point, actually. In this Disney universe. I'm so perplexed. So that's the research I did today. I really feel like I did. You did get some good work. Um, Solid journalism, Brian Moot. I am proud. I, I mean, I don't know if I just dropped a bomb in your life today. I hope you don't have you to tell your kids about this. You just changed my world. I cannot mention it. They will be crushed. I feel like I changed a lot of people's worlds. That's what we do here on Nearly Informed. Also, I might be wrong. Hi, this is Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. There are many life changes that can happen after divorce that make it difficult or impossible to uphold requirements of your divorce decree. The orders issued in a divorce are based on the facts presented at that time but the circumstances used in issuing those orders can obviously change. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, talk to us at Cordell & Cordell. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Don't miss the anniversary sale at Safeway going on now. Great low prices on the things your whole family will love. Look for qualifying tags in store to soak up all the savings at Safeway. These savings are definitely worth celebrating, so head in store and shop the anniversary sale today. 
We're here at Circle K witnessing a legendary drink mix for 79 cents. Looks like he's going with red sports drink. And now lemon lime soda. Oh, the Cola Froster top off. Polar Pops and Frosters are only 79 cents each at Circle K. Limited time only at participating locations. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. I mean, for real, though. Because, well, let's just say it this way. The research is overwhelmingly in, not the research, but the the opinions are overwhelmingly that Pluto, or that Goofy is a dog. But I don't just take, like, the number of opinions. When I read the story about the Egyptian heritage of Goofy... I kind of felt like that's a that's a more reasonable story that in the 30s they couldn't have a half Egyptian cow as a Disney character. Did okay? you guys know that Goofy was half Egyptian? Goofy is half Egyptian. Now you know what he may not be half cow or a full cow, but he loves cows, and I think that in this day and age, if he wants to identify as a cow, we let you identify with how you want to. Um, it is Brad's birthday. <laughs> he is out. Um, Shreen and I were talking before the show started today about. Creeping up on 40. Damn. I know. It doesn't, kinda, doesn't hmm. seem that old, though, now, does it? I mean, I've never had a problem with aging. Like, I've always actually been, like, annoyingly positive about aging where everyone else was like, wham, wham, I'm getting yeah. older. I was, I was like, yeah, it's amazing. But I think 35 was the end of me feeling like it was amazing. Yeah, I agree. You, you know, know? When it's that, that's when, like, hangovers get real. And you're like, oh, like, I'm, I'm staring down the barrel of 40, and that <laughs> is coming for me hard. And how do I feel about it? I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to be like quintessential drama, drama queen, like, wah, I'm 40. But it is like, oh, like I am, there is no pretending I'm not right. hashtag adulting so damn hard right now. It's funny. Was the saying like thir- like 40 is the new 30 or 30 is the new 20 or 40, whatever, all yes, those things? Yes, yes. Were those, did those exist in our parents' generation? I kind of don't remember. Pro- I mean, I- we'd have to ask them because let's be honest, we have no freaking idea. But I doubt it. I feel like uh, we, they accepted aging a lot better than we do. Like, we kind of like, no, no, it's the new 20. Yeah. 30 is the new 20. Yeah. And our parents were just like, ah, screw it. I'm 40. It's almost over. <laughs> forget <laughs> think, it, dude. I'll just have grandkids. It. Come on, damn it. <laughs> I'm, Make some I'm running out of, uh, I'm running out of, uh, of things that make me feel like I'm useful around this damn place. Well, exactly. I mean, I do think, like, I think our generation probably has a harder time with it because I feel like the generation right above us is like was good with their like sort of normal lives of like Mm -hmm. you have a job, you get married, you make the babies. And it was just like that was life. I feel like we're a little more like we want to travel, man. We want to be so fancy free. We want to YouTube it and become a like content creator. Like it's just a different time now. So I just imagine like I was talking about this with my girlfriend. I've had a couple good conversations with my girlfriend recently. One, um, and my brother, very important conversations. One, I told her the other day, and I kind of think this, but I also I just think I'd be miserable, but I kind of wonder what it'd be like just to be back in that generation where we didn't have the capability in our pocket to make ourselves millionaires. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. phones and social media and those things like we- Didn't exist. No, and we're like kind of in control of our own destiny to a way, to a point that's almost- like intimidating. Yeah, it's like overwhelming. Right, like like you're like, supposed to. There's no rat race anymore if yeah. you don't want it to be. Because yeah. all you got to do is get out there, be creative, and just stick with it and believe in yourself and don't give up on yeah. your creative endeavors. And then maybe you can take that thing that fuels you and you become like famous at it, right? Yeah. Because back in the day, you just kind of like, Bob, here's my job. I'm going to do 35 yeah. years and this, and then I'm going to retire. And then some days I find myself like on you know i I've, I've worked all day in various forms of radio or entertainment or whatever and then the work doesn't stop i'm like sending emails i'm like trying to book shows i'm trying to do other things yeah. in show business i'm trying to you know work on a production company yeah and you know keep my brother's documentary going i kind of like have a weird like fantasy <laughs> that I just go nine to five and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it simplifies your life and you kind of just get to relax. Like 4.58 on a Friday. Boop, <laughs> boop. <laughs> quitting time. <laughs> and then I just like literally, my desk, I have a desktop computer in this fantasy, of course, like of course. an old one. Got and to. I don't even bother to shut it down because it ain't mine. I just hit the power button. Later. <laughs> just shut that bitch off. And... I don't care what's on there because I didn't finish it. And I'll finish it on Monday when I come back in after I check all of my fantasy football teams. I go walk around the office for an hour. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Do you ever just like, like those like the cooler where you have like those like hang out by the cooler? Yeah, There's no just, more of those anymore. Yeah, like when when can we go go to the water cooler? There you go. The wa- that's what we need. Water cooler talk. Water cooler breaks. <laughs> hey guys, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like the office, like the show, like where it's just like yeah, everyone's dicking room. off. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know that I can still cuss because it's podcast form. So you yeah, just yeah, gotta forgive me for my like trash Dig mouth off here. All you want to. <laughs> Everyone's just dicking off. Okay, I need to be able to. No, say that. I, I I agree. Like, there's no because now you're yeah. always if you are some and I think this even for someone who has a nine to five job, if they have anything creative outside that they're trying to do that they'd rather do more, the the thought of dicking off just feels like now you're like costing you're t- yourself money. You're a terrible person, right? I yeah. like, I just remember that when I worked for my grandparents in Irvine. Like, I would do everything I could to not work. Like, I would, if someone needed something picked up at the office. <laughs> oh, my God. I do. I mean, I was a professional at this. I would I would walk slower. I'd take the long way back to my desk. Yeah. You know, if I had to go to the bathroom, I'd do it there for sure. And I'd take my time. And I yeah. just think about I'm getting paid to, to go to poop. Right. You're whatever. like, money's coming my way regardless. We're good. Yeah. If somebody, if anyone needed anything picked up or dropped off, I was the first one to raise my hand. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. If I knew yeah. if I knew there was traffic and I was on a work run, oh, you better. Bl- I was praying for that. Yeah. Someone would be like, hey, man, you should drive in the carpool lane. I'm like, no. No, I'm good. it just means we get back faster. Exactly. <laughs> to do work, and we don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, but see, now I think that stuff would kill me because all I want to do is anything else besides work. But now we have the capability to always change our lives. I think that's intimidating. Well, I think it's like, one, it is super overwhelming because if you have a phone and then you have like the entire internet at your fingertips, and you basically have like the world globally at your fingertips 24-7, right. you can like create content 24-7. So the question is... This is a lot. This is the. This is where life coaching comes in. The question <laughs> is: Extreme laid on me. Yeah, here comes Brian. Um, like, what kind of a life do you want to live? This is when you have to like stop. You mm-hmm. know, disconnect from the rat race or the like. You know, whatever the hedonic treadmill, and like go out into the woods. Come what's on, my. Ha- what's hedonic? The mean? hedonic treadmill is basically the. I know someone else is thinking that right now, and they're like, "No, it's I'm good." I'm just gonna gloss over Let's... the fact that I don't know what hedonic. Yeah, is. it's like just the idea that we like. We aspire to something, and then we get there, and then we have a new thing we're aspiring to. So basically, that like it never really ends. So you think you've achieved this thing, and then there's a next. It's Always. like a ladder, basically. Exactly. Just, but a ladder where you think you've hit the top rung, and, and then, then you haven't. And then there's more. And then you're like, why am I keep? Why am I yeah. climbing this stuff? So that's why you gotta like take time to like turn your phone off, have some deep conversations with your girlfriend, like go journal, my God. go inward, and then decide like, what do I really want my life to look like? Think about like. Maybe when you're going to die, like what's going to make you feel proud of the way you lived? Then you can create healthy boundaries for yourself around all this internet crap. Great. We're going to talk about death and girlfriend talk next. I'm Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. We help men deal with the life changes triggered by divorce, such as child custody and property division, among many others. But life changes also occur after divorce. These changes can make parts of your existing court order irrelevant or harder to follow. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, talk to us at Cordell & Cordell. We're a partner men can count on. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Don't miss the anniversary sale at Safeway going on now. Great low prices on the things your whole family will love. Look for qualifying tags in store to soak up all the savings at Safeway. These savings are definitely worth celebrating, so head in store and shop the anniversary sale today. We're here at Circle K witnessing a legendary drink mix for 79 cents. Looks like he's going with red sports drink. And now lemon lime soda. Oh, the cola froster top off. Polar pops and frosters are only 79 cents each at Circle K. Limited time only at participating locations. Find Nearly Informed on Instagram and Twitter at Nearly Informed. You know, you really got to just dig deep, you know, talk about death and yeah, girlfriends. it's cool. No big deal. She's Nearly Informed. You can find Shereen Thor at Shereen Thor on Instagram. I'm at Mood Comedy on Instagram. You can go to my Twitter if you want, but I feel like people get irritated with me there. Yeah? I'm a lot more opinionated on Twitter. Oh, really? Why so? Uh, Because less people follow me there. So you're like, hey, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like that's what Twitter's become, though. Twitter's become the place I go to for news, you know? Yeah. I'm always looking for news sources uh, and breaking things that are happening. And then I'll also throw out a hot take or something every once in a while. I almost tweeted this, but I took it back because I know, listen... I know that Twitter, 140 characters can be hard to embody the entire statement you're trying to make, right? Yeah. So for me, it's like like a Georgia has passed this heartbeat bill. 
or they're signing into law. I'm not 100% sure on the details of where that bill stands, but I know the new governor, Nathan Deal, is a conservative, and he um, he wants the heartbeat bill, which is basically like no, abortion's illegal after six weeks, which is all problematic for a lot of people because sometimes you don't even know you're pregnant until yeah. six weeks. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people are opposed to abortion based on religion, and they and they go a religious route of when life, life begins at what yeah. time. There's that debate. Um, I kind of... I definitely go down the path of I'm not going to make anybody have a baby um, that doesn't want to and is not ready and I think that when it comes to th- this is the tweet I was going to try I was trying to craft a tweet but then I didn't want it to be taken out of context by people I I don't think you can be pro-life at at the definition of life and birth and anti-social services which is what a lot of people do and not everybody. So mm-hmm. if you're if you're pro life and you're very pro schools and pro uh, at risk youth funding and all these other programs, then I applaud you. That is consistent. Be consistent. But it's hard for me when I hear some people that are like, "Yo, you abortions to- murder," and then it's and then you're like, "Yeah, okay, I get that. You want every baby to be born because somehow you think baby every baby's God's gift, and that is your opinion to think." Yeah. But also. If they're God's gift at birth at six weeks or what six weeks of you know uh, you know in in utero, they're God's gift forever. Yeah. So look at every human as God's gift. Mm-hmm. So just be consistent with your yeah your opinion on it. Yeah. You know. But I didn't tweet it because I know that no matter yeah. what, people aren't gonna. If you don't know me, you're just like wow, this guy trying to tell me how I should feel about religion. And I'm yeah. like, nah, I'm not really. I'm just telling you to be consistent. And if that's how you feel, it's how you feel. Listen, I worked with at-risk youth and I worked in programs that got funding slashed by mm-hmm. the same people who were like, you must keep this baby at eight weeks when mm-hmm. you got a mom who could be super at risk herself and this yeah. is just not the right time. And that yeah. child may end up in foster services, yeah. may end up in a variety of different places. And if, which is, if you're down for that, if you're down for supporting that, that that baby at, that was at six weeks and that mom wasn't ready, if you're down down for that sacrifice mm-hmm. to pay tax dollars to help that individual become successful, then by all means, who am I to tell you that you are wrong? But you can't tweet all that. You can't. <laughs> like a, yeah, you know that what? That was a two-minute explanation. See, that is such a good point because I've been thinking about this lately Like, because I'm finally re-releasing Awaken the Rebel podcast. Like, The uh-huh. things I've all been recording are finally going to come out. And I'm like, I'm so excited about it because I feel like social media just doesn't do it for me because there's just right. not enough room for nuance. You don't get to say everything you just said right. in a, like a really short blip, and there's so much room for being interpreted negatively, and then someone re re posting it and like right. pointing you out like an a hole, and I'm just like, ugh, 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 it's just also, gross. Also, like my ability to not have typos when I tweet on my phone, <laughs> it's just like, come on, man, like I forget ours and your all the time, and it's like I just get it together, I'll, bro. I just no, I agree with you, and also I think this too, and I'm I I hope that people are coming around to this because this is what got me in to talk radio versus, no, don't get me wrong, I'm here for the shenanigans, I'm here for the jokes. I even like making serious stuff funny. Yeah, totally. But I think it's important to have discussions. Like, I don't believe that my stance on that abortion argument that I just made in terms of, like, um, concepts of birth. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that, as long, my argument is consistency, be consistent. And if you can make an argument either direction... That doesn't end up just calling somebody an idiot. Yeah. Then you're good with me. That's the thing when, and I argue with this with my brother Patrick all the time. He's a very passionate, uh, very passionate individual. And I told him the other day, I was like, dude, if you build your argument, and at the end of it, you're be like, wow, you're an idiot. No, then, <laughs> well, one, you're not listening, and you, if you think they're an idiot, then you're really not taking in. Yeah. You're not. They're not trying to see the other side of the coin. Yeah. I've had a lot of deep conversations this week. I brought. What's this up. up with you? What's up with you and your deep ass? Yo, I just. I here's the thing. <laughs> I've I've been somebody who you know, like we said, we're we're on the precipice. Not the precipice. It makes it sound like we're turning forty tomorrow. <laughs> nah, but you know what I'm saying. Like we hit thirty five, and then it's like, yo, yeah. you can see it. You like can see it. you know, yeah, yeah you're like you're oh, over that oh, hill, oh. and you're like you can see yeah. the valley of the next one. And you're like, oh, that's forty, and you can see the peak of fifty, and you're like, whoa, yeah. Um, so I know I. Uh, <laughs> My girlfriend and I have been having all these conversations about children and about, you know, like our future because she's in Atlanta still. And I think she's going to take another another job out there, which oh, would that's mean interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, there's just too many opportunities for her right now. Yeah. It's kind of like fun. where I'm trying to Get figure it, out of a girl, boss. Well, chick. I know she's crushing it, <laughs> but I kind of feel like where she's at right now is where I was at when we were making the decision, L.A. or Atlanta, right? yeah. or Atlanta, stay in Atlanta or go to L.A. 
And it's like when things start coming at you, they start coming at you. And like any career, you kind of got to take your shots when you have the opportunity yeah. to do so. Right. So she's got another project coming her way. And she's kind of at the point where it's like, hey, do I take on a business partner for this project or I do it myself, which is going to be more work. Yeah. And I was like, look, you know, we don't have kids. We've talked about having kids. Um, I'm we're in long distance relationship. I've always told you if you want to take another job, that's fine. It means you'll probably be based out of Atlanta and yeah. I'll be coming back and forth. But it also means that for a while, you know, as long as uh, I'm in the situation I'm in with with my morning show and with every other endeavor I do out in Los Angeles, it, until I get that like flexibility to be able to travel or to work remotely, yeah, um, I, I, there will be times when I'm not around, yeah, you know, especially if we have a child and she's taking on another project. So we've been talking about like when's a good time to take a shot on another project, and I said, you know, to be honest, right now. Like if yeah. to set it up to a point where if you went on maternity leave, um, yeah. that, that you'd be fine to come back to your project. And she works in real estate, so it's kind of like you're never really on maternity leave. You're you still right. got your phone and you're still yeah. making connections and so on. But I was telling her, I was like, what's funny, it's like I have I'm at a point now in my life where like every excuse of not excuse, but rationale. Right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I can't have a baby. I'm like, I don't have any health insurance. You're like, that's gone. Yeah, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't have, I, I'm a comedian. I tour. Like, I live, I have roommates. It's like, oh, that's gone. That's I, I own a house. So shoot. You yeah. Know, I'm just knocking these You're things so out. I'm knocking right all these logical things out. And now it's like, okay, distance, but, you know, that can be rectified by working remotely for, yeah. at times and working back here at times. And as long as, to be honest, as long as whatever you're doing brings entertaining content to a show, you're kind of fine to do it. Yeah. Um, but then also I thought, like, yeah, I just kind of feel like my life creatively, I've, I know that I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm really solid at being funny with things that are in the moment and, you know, think, you know coming up with thoughts and opinions. But my life seems boring. What do you mean? It's just like I just go to, you know, I go to the radio show, then I go to the gym, then I like do more radio stuff. Yeah. You just I like go work, home, work, work. Then yeah. I do stand up. Then it's like I travel on the weekends. And granted, I mean, interesting things happen. Yeah, maybe to that's me. boring to you, but to most people, it's like, whoa. Well, see, but they have like, <laughs> they're putting out fires at home all day long with their kids sticking Cheerios in their noses and stuff. And I, here's the thing I think you learn a lot about yourself. And maybe I'm wrong, but you have two children. And you're married, so I'm sure you you grasp a little bit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I I feel like you learn a lot about yourself. You like open yeah. up a whole part of yourself that sure. maybe you. I mean, like you can't pretend you have kids and make content about that. I mean, I'm sure you could. I'm just not that good. Oh, I see. So you're saying kids would be like a new adventure. Yeah, a new a new phase of my life that I'm actually like look like like sim- excited about. Like excited. Well, let's not get crazy. Like semi excited. Ma- ma- semi excited about. No, I'm like I think it would be really. <laughs> I think Nerd. It'd be, I think it'd be like <laughs> exciting. I think it would, I would, it'd be funny for me at times. I think I would totally. learn a lot about myself. I think, yeah, in terms of creativity, <sighs> I, I think I'd find a whole nother level of myself creatively. Oh, you know, when you feel time. like you hit like a, st- a stagnant part of your life creatively, yeah, like you're like, all right, well, I'm just talking about you know dating and blah yeah. blah blah. It's kids kind of boring. So, and not that kids are super exciting, but I think the pe- the perspective on the lens that people look at kids. So I was telling her, I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I honestly felt like never felt more ready to have kids. Yeah. Not immediately. <laughs> yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like, in, Well, it will bake for about nine to ten months. I mean, <laughs> hopefully more on the side of ten. I mean, it's if 40 weeks is ten months. I don't yeah, know why right? they call it nine months. It's really rude. They're just right. I feel like they kind of like they kind of cheapen the experience yeah. for you ladies yeah. and what you guys have to go through. But did you find? I mean, do you find yourself being more life coachy and creative now that you have kids, That's or do you think you question. could still like life coach if you were just like nap kidless Shireen? No, you know what? Fancy free. I actually, I'm in the process of writing a more story form bio on my about me mm-hmm. page. That's less like, look at me, and I'm impressive, and more like, here's what my journey's been. And I'm realizing that, like, motherhood made me, like, ten times better at being a coach. Right. Because it actually added a little nuance. Like, like, like maybe I was, like, the social media coach before, mm-hmm. like, short, you know, form, and everything yeah. was- Here's didn't... a tweet. Here's a tweet. But then motherhood opened up my world to, like, postpartum depression and just, like, struggle and sleeplessness and all kinds of dart that I uh-huh. just wasn't aware of before. And um, I just got way better at, like, the nuance. Well, when people trust you more when you have some sort of life experience. There's nothing worse than somebody's, like- I'm 29, I have no kids, and let me tell you about life. (laughs) I'm Scott Trout, CEO of the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell. 
We help men deal with the life changes triggered by divorce, such as child custody and property division, among many others. But life changes also occur after divorce. These changes can make parts of your existing court order irrelevant or harder to follow. If you feel a modification to your court orders might be necessary, talk to us at Cordell & Cordell. We're a partner men can count on. Contact CordellCordell.com, 1065 East Hillsdale Boulevard, Suite 310, Foster City, California, 94404. Don't miss the anniversary sale at Safeway going on now. Great low prices on the things your whole family will love. Look for qualifying tags in store to soak up all the savings at Safeway. These savings are definitely worth celebrating, so head in store and shop the anniversary sale today. We're here at Circle K witnessing a legendary drink mix for 79 cents. Looks like he's going with red sports drink. And now lemon lime soda. Oh, the Cola Froster top off. Polar Pops and Frosters are only 79 cents each at Circle K. Limited time only at participating locations. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. Though I feel like that life coach would be perfect for this show. <laughs> like, I don't really don't know what I'm talking about, but, but this, it, is, this is what I think. So we could make fun of them, yes. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that there's, like, a lot of humor in the perspectiveless life coach. There is. You know, like, it's like well, the, I've, I've never done it, but this is what I would do. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm deep and I know things and you should huh. listen to me. I have a lot of motivational quotes on my Instagram. Oh, my God. There's so many of those. Uh, I always, every time I've thought about doing that, I was like, I, my motivational quotes are always come from a dark place. <laughs> You're dark. <laughs> I'm like, oh god, that sounds morbid. I think people are gonna, people are gonna text me to see if I'm okay. Is this you prepping us to talk about death? Is that what's happening? Uh, right now? Well, I don't know. Maybe oh, we have a couple topics I want to hit before we get out of here. Uh, this is nearly informed. Brad is out. It's his birthday. He's really cool. Too cool for us today. Uh, he's like, he's that guy lately. He's been. He seems brooding. Oh, Brad, Brad seems a, he's brooding Brad. Brooding Not in a Brad. bad way. He just always like. You can see he's always playing chess. You know when someone's playing chess in their mind and They're you're really, playing. And yeah. I'm always on a perpetual game of checkers. <laughs> You're like, like, wait a minute. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you always win. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. King me. This is the worst. Um, oh, brooding Brad. So I don't know. He's, he's, up to, he's up to birthday stuff. Okay. Uh, well, that's fun. We thought we, we should have had a little birthday party for him this morning in studio, but we kind of forgot. We had, I mean, we didn't <laughs> forget his birthday. Funny. We had his wife and daughter singing on the radio. Aww, so that's, that's, always, so that's always good. That's so sweet. But we thought that, I thought that Nikki was going to bring in, his wife was going to bring in cupcakes and stuff. And then, but I guess Brad had told her like, I don't want that. And then yeah. she actually listened to that. Which... And she shouldn't be listening. You well, never you... know, man. Brad's a character, dude. Yeah. See, it's hard. It depends. You really don't know. Okay. L- let's just ask that, answer that question. If Kenny says he doesn't want to do anything for his birthday, do you know he's full of it? Tr- trying to be like fake humble and like, yo, okay. I don't want to tell you what I'm doing. Yeah. Or I don't want to, you know, I don't, uh, I'm uncomfortable telling you what to do. But you know, deep down he wants a party? Yeah. Okay. So like this actually happened when he, last October, he turned 40 and it was, I was like, this is a big birthday. Ooh, like, yeah, that is. Right? Like I was like, I'm, I wanted to throw like a blowout surprise party. Like I was like, oh yeah, we doing this. When he have his parents fly. Out, it's gonna be great, but every time I thought about it, I was like, I don't think this is what he would want. Like, I feel like this yeah. is more like my style of being like, ah! so what I did was I planned something that he has always wanted for a really long time. I basically sent him and like 10 of his best guy friends fishing. Wow, <laughs> it was like a guy's retreat weekend. That's amazing, <laughs> and, what a great and, idea! And it was good actually. Like, he got a dude, some guys flew out for it because a lot of his people are from Chicago, whatever, yeah. so he got some hometown buddies, he got his like football buddies, and they all were... T- Did they go to, like tropical fishing, or were they It was fishing? like a boat out of Marina Del Rey. Oh, it was okay. an eight-hour kind of a thing. Eight-hour tour. Exactly. Just like Gilligan. That's a great idea. It I've was seen- good, yeah. I felt like it was a good mix of like, I'm giving him something, I'm planning something for him, yeah. but also like, it's something that he would want. It's not like some weird, disjointed surprise party that's going to throw him off. See, my, my girlfriend is... Uh, my girlfriend is... She's interesting in that regard. She doesn't want to not have a party, but also she hates being the center of attention. Mm. Like, she hates it. She's really nervous. Yeah. Like, it's just not her thing, which is weird because she's in a business where you're always talking. I think when she's, yeah. when she's like, you know, in her comfort zone, it's like, I'm selling, I'm doing these things, but I don't think she likes everyone's attention focused on her. I don't think she likes to be speaking in front of people. Yeah. So, for her, last year we went to Vegas, but it was like... Six of us. It was like two groups of friends, that's and we fun. all hung by the pool and stuff. And it was less about her birthday and more about all of us being in Vegas, which oh, I think she fun. loved. Yeah. Uh, except for the fact that she suckered me into a Chanel necklace. That was a real kick in the balls. 
I was like, is that yeah. where you got that like Gucci sweatshirt too? Uh, she got that for me because I've always just said I wanted a bougie sweatshirt. <laughs> that for... cracks me up. Well, it's funny because I've just never been bougie clothes guy. I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing Gap and Target. Right, it's, that's it's great. Ninety five percent of my outfits are Gap and Target. A yeah. mixture, and sometimes it's all Target. Just keep it easy. You sometimes know? I take my clothes. I walk into Target wearing nothing but Target clothes, and I feel like <laughs> I'm bringing my clothes back to like show off. Like, look where we made. You're like it. a model. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm just standing in the men's. department. <laughs> And they're like, oh, what, oh, that shirt looks exactly like that guy's. Like, jeez. Oh, the worst is the screen print ones. I bought a Nirvana one because I thought it was cool. And then yeah. I noticed how way too people have these Nirvanas because Target. That's the unfortunate thing about Target. I do the same thing. I shop at Target. It's like, keep it easy, dude. I don't have time for this stuff. So I feel like with Target screen print, like vintage looking shirts, yeah. you got to buy them knowing you're not going to wear them for five years. By the it's time true. everybody's then like, then they'll be real vintage, right? And everybody's like <laughs> lost Moved on them to and the you, new Target thing. Yeah, they're all dish rags now. <laughs> Your Nirvana vintage dish rag. So this year, I'm not sure what. I mean, I, it's July 20th is her birthday. It's actually her mom's birthday too. She stole her mom's. Oh, birthday. Oh wow, that's interesting. Oh, what an a hole, right? How cute are that? Like twinsies. No, she, <laughs> no, she a-hole? was never sharing that birthday with her mom. Are you kidding me? Jessica, as a as a teenager, was like, "Yeah, mom, happy it's, birthday to us." It's my it's birthday. It's like, bitch, it's my birthday. <laughs> Well, um, what about yours? Yours is happening first. Uh, Dude, we got to talk about you and me. You're, you said 15th? 15th, May 15th. I'm 23rd. So I don't like birthdays for me. No? I don't like presents. None? Nothing? I get stressed out by people asking me what I want. I'm like, I don't really have anything I want. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I get weird about That's it. That's kind of weird of you because you're just so easygoing about basically everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I just feel like there's enough stuff I have to coordinate in my life. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I don't know, if someone threw a barbecue for me, or if, like she sent me on yeah. a fishing trip, I'd be like, yeah. Right? Like, but then it that? sounds like I don't want to hang out with her. Oh, no. I was I like took the kids. I went to my mom's for the weekend. They had our house as like their bachelor pad. Oh, that way, shoot. The people who paid for flights didn't have to pay for an Airbnb, too. I was like, this is, I'm a gangster Did right you put now. like a, a secret camera in there to see if they had strippers or anything? Never. I couldn't care less. I was happy to be away. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's so true. You're like, I don't care. Have a stripper. Do whatever, whatever I care. Really, whatever <laughs> I care. Yeah. No, yeah, Kenny's just... like such a good guy, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I married a very good, decent Midwestern person, so I don't worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, I I, don't, I wouldn't have a stripper at my party just because I always feel bad not getting, like, I always turn down lap dances. You're like, uh. One, I just feel like the whole thing is ridiculous in general. And contrived. Like, and I'm going to pay you 20 bucks to rub your tits all over me right now. Like, yeah. it just seems like, <laughs> one, what do you, uh, you want to pretend, you want me to, like, in my mind, like, suspend disbelief and pretend this is happening for real? But yeah, then I'm like, yeah, this, yeah. I know that I'm going to pay you money at the end of this. <laughs> Doesn't feel good, and then, <laughs> and then I feel, then I feel like oh, I have a funny strip club story. We'll close it out with. I want to talk about Nipsey Hustle. It's just sad, but whatever. I don't want to talk about it. And you don't want to talk about. Well, okay. You know what? The truth is, you guys, Brian's pretty informed, and I'm barely informed. Yeah. So, so, like, honestly, my news comes from listening to you on the radio in the morning or watching your Instagram or like the Daily Show, like yeah. Comedy Central, political or whatever. That's way few and far between. So really, you're my news. Well, okay, real quick before, because I want to close it out. I don't want to close it out on Nipsey Hustle talk. I want to close it out on this strip club story because you don't want to depress us. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a bummer, man. Um, no, Nipsey Hustle. The whole thing is he's a rapper, um, independent rapper, activist. He's a Grammy nominated rapper now. He had an album, and he was murdered in front of his store um, by a guy he got into an argument with, and it was just it was a murder based on male ego, which is awful. Yeah. Um, but the thing about it is, and I noticed this, and it's weird because I've never lived in a place where, like, a musician's death had impacted people like it impacted people yeah. in the neighborhood that I live in and in other neighborhoods around Los Angeles. But so he, what he was doing was he was, you know, a multimillionaire who was doing a thing called Buy Back the Block on Crenshaw and Slauson where he was buying buildings and he was like, encouraging uh, black business owners and not just black, but That's Latino cool. and community based. Basically, the whole premise yeah. was. Yo, let's build this community back up from the inside out. So let's That's make cool. sure that every dollar, or not every dollar, but all the do- the money that we make in this community stays in this community. Mm-hmm. Let's stop. Let's stop in this community. Let's stop taking the money we earn and spending it at the Beverly Center mm-hmm. in you know Los Angeles, you know other mm-hmm. cities. Let's spend cool. it here. Yeah, with the markets and the grocery stores, and really but let's cool. also improve the quality of these things. And you know, I think the one silver lining of his death is that it brought light to that project that he was doing. Mm-hmm. So ideally, yeah, more people start to reinvest in their own communities, you know. Yeah. And by the way, I, saying that, if you have a corner market and it's locally owned, it's owned by people in the community and you like those people, buy from them, you know. 
don't buy from the big chains because yeah. that money goes to all sorts of white people. <laughs> 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 who don't need your money and they don't want it and they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate it. The more yeah. money you have, the less you appreciate every dollar. Um, no, I'm kidding. But no, when you keep it in the community, that helps like yeah. people, it, like tax brackets in your community. It helps like the parks and the thing and just the, the morale in the community. Mm-hmm. And it helps people take pride in those things. So that's what he's working on. Hopefully that continues. All right, let's talk about my strip club story. Okay. Um, here's why I wouldn't have a stripper at my party too. Because I always feel bad turning them down. I feel like when I... You're like, I'm sorry. I don't want you, actually. No, I don't. I, <laughs> I know I, that's unique and rare, but you're gross. I feel like I... <laughs> no, I would never do that. Because what if they hurt their self-esteem? They clearly... Their self-esteem know. is already hurt if they're stripping. Maybe. Sometimes I think that some strippers, though, are so so uh, delusionally confident in their life and everything they do that yeah. they walk in there like, oh, I'm about to take everybody down. Like a poker player. Who like, what's up, bitch? Right? You know, and some of them, I think, actually just understand that, that sex is an exchange for right. money and they just know how to and use the, that talent. And the clock's going to run out on this thing. Yeah, they're like, let's um, just get it right now. No, no, I always feel like I have to like explain to them why I'm not getting a dance, but they've done this a thousand times. So they're like, do you yeah. want to dance? And, and the people are like, nah. And they just walk on. But I always feel like if I say no, like I have to have a reason. That's really funny. Like, actually. it's not you, it's You're me. You're just such a yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, listen, it's not you, it's me. I, uh, uh, I mean, I wish I had the money right now. I totally, you're beautiful. So you're very sweet. Um, but no, no, I just don't want you to think that it was you. Okay. I just, I feel like I'm having this weird You're like breakup. an empath. Exactly. You're like having a breakup, but you never had a relationship. Yeah. You're just like an empath. You don't want to reject. You just want them to know that they are still loved. I Even ha- if not by you in that moment. Exactly. I want, to, I want them to go away from that like, oh, I still feel good about I myself. I still feel good. Right? So I was in Scottsdale, Arizona this for spring hilarious. training. And uh, this is the worst, <laughs> man. And I got talked into going to a strip club with my buddy. And we go. And um, he's he's a semi-famous dude. Okay. So he like immediately got a lot of attention. And, and they thought we were baseball players. Okay. So that's funny, right? Because it's Scottsdale and spring training, so we yeah. could be like baseball players that are just minor leaguers. We're not like famous or anything, right? So they think I'm a baseball player. They they recognize him from television, and so they're like, "Hey, come to the VIP section." And I'm okay. like, "Ah, oh, this seems like going to be uncomfortable." Totally. Um, but then <laughs> then this girl's like, "Hey, come with me," and I'm like, "Oh, okay. Like, where's the?" VIP? And she puts me in a room by myself, just with her. And oh. I'm like, oh, geez. I'm like, I'm in the VIP room. What the hell does this even mean? I've never. Oh, and she starts like um, trying to like dance and stuff. and yeah. Get you and, going. And I'm like, I'm gripping the hand. Like the, <laughs> You're afraid for your life. Yeah. I'm <laughs> gripping the handles on this chair. And she can see and I just look super scared. Like, I, <laughs> like, oh like I'm flinching and stuff. And she goes, she goes. You look like you're not even enjoying this. Yeah. And I was like, I, you know, listen, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, I, these make me a little bit uncomfortable. I didn't know that this is what we were going to be doing. And she's like, um, I'm going to go get a bottle of water. Do you want something? And I'm like, sure. Is this normal? I, do I have to stay in this room? And she like <laughs> whoosh, goes by this curtain and walks away. And I, I'm there for like 30 minutes by myself. Oh, wow. I'm just sitting in there like. Meditating. This is super weird. <laughs> Soaking in the awkward. Apparently there was like a fist fight in the strip club. They clear the club out and just forget about me oh, in this room, right? Oh, my gosh. So I'm sitting in this room for like 35 minutes. I poke my head out and the guy's like, hey, stop looking. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> He was like, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, I'm like, I I just been in this room. And and she goes, Oh, I was with him. And she goes, Oh, you were with her? And I was like, but for like 90 seconds. Yeah. For like, but not like I couldn't. And like then I felt like I was just like, no, but it was like, whatever, dude. 90 seconds. So then the guy's like, oh. And he she goes, he needs to close out. And I'm like, I need to what? So he brings back uh a, like a receipt for like three hundred dollars. What? And I'm like, for three? I was like, for what? And he yeah. goes, you were in the private room for 40 minutes. And I'm like, oh, no, I was in there for like 90 seconds. And then she took off because yeah. it was weird. And then there was a fight that broke out, right? Right. And the guy's like, is that true? And she's like, well, I mean, I tried to get back, but I couldn't because there was a fight. And the guy's like, she tried to get back. I'm like, what? So they ended up, two security guards charged me $300 Stop it. for a 90-second lap dance where the stripper asked me, Am I okay? <laughs> and then says, you don't look like you're enjoying this. <laughs> and you know what the worst part is, Shereen? I walked out of that situation going like, I hope she doesn't feel bad about herself. <laughs> of course you did. This is Nearly Informed. If you like this show, find it on the Radio.com app and subscribe. 
Don't miss the anniversary sale at Safeway going on now. Great low prices on the things your whole family will love. Look for qualifying tags in store to soak up all the savings at Safeway. These savings are definitely worth celebrating. So head in store and shop the anniversary sale today. Right now, you can get both Sprint's unlimited plan and the all-new Samsung Galaxy S10 included for just $35 per month per line for five lines. All you need is approved credit and an 18-month lease. No trade-in required. Visit a Sprint store, Sprint.com, or call 800-SPRINT-1. S10, 128 gigabyte, $10 a month, up to $250 month credit, apply then two bills, or cancel the remaining balance due money. Basic up to 930, 20, pay $32 per month per line. Auto pay data for organization to congestion. Speed maximum, zero stores, and restrictions apply.